off of an EP called Witch Rock, and the song I played for you there is Burn. And I have with me, via the telephone, in the studio, Lexi. Hey! Hello, Hello Lexi, how are you? Good, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good. So you're <laughs> actually on your tour right now. What's What city are you in right now? We're actually on our way to Sault Ste. Marie. We're actually, uh, we're at like a pit stop somewhere. It says country store, or okay. sorry, county store. So we're probably like somewhere outside of it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that uh, I wanted to ask you, start with, is it is it just you going to be you uh, in the interview or are all of you present listening? Uh, it's only going to be me because if I put it on speaker, the sound's going to get all wonky. But okay. They'll probably be yelling something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds if I good. Screw up, that's what they do. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Um, I thought uh, maybe you should introduce each member of the band, just in case people don't know who you are. And like we were talking before, it's been a couple years since you've been in Thunder Bay, so yeah, that yeah. way, you know, people would get to know who's going to be here tomorrow night. Uh, okay, so I'm Lexi, and I play vocal and guitar. Uh, play vocal. I sing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I play guitar. Uh, French plays bass. And Nadia, she's a uh, drummer. Great. And uh, I was doing a little bit of research about you guys, and one of the things that I had no idea about was that you started really young. Yeah. Like, really young. I know. And that's, uh, to me, like, I, I've this year I've just started running these workshops with young teenage girls between the age of 13 and 17, and I'm that's teaching really them how funny. to have their voice, you know? Yeah, um, and that's so important, especially, like, around that age. And so how like, how did you make that jump from, you know, being inspired, going to your first rock show, wanting to be in a band, and then having the courage to go be on stage? Like, what was it that really pushed you? I don't know. Well, I think, actually, like, for me personally, I just, I remember being, like, a really young girl. I was probably, like, maybe about 16, and I remember, like, Nadia French and I, and like, we'd always go to concerts and just, you know, we'd see these live shows and, you know, there was always, like, these bands that we really loved. And, you know, a lot of them were, like, male-fronted bands and, you know, because you'd have crushes on the cute boys and all that. And mm-hmm. I don't know, but I always remember, though, that, like, there was something, like, really amazing about, like, seeing a musician on stage and just seeing how much, like, power it, they commanded. And there was something, like, really empowering about that just in mm. general. But then, like, I would also notice, though, too, it was, like, either there was, like, two types of girls at the shows. It was, like, you know, one were the girls that were, like, you know, waiting for the guys at the side of the stage, hoping that the guys would take them home. Mm -hmm. And then there was the other girls that were, like, you know, they were just there to, like, really just, like, have a good time. And it's, like, they didn't care what they looked like. Their jeans were ripped. Like, it was just, like, you know what I mean? Like, at that age, it's, like, I just kind of looked at that and it's, like, I decided in that moment, like, which one I wanted to be. So I was just, like, you know what? Like, I want to be the girl with the guitar. Like, I want to play in a band and... I don't know, just, like, that idea, like, obviously, like, delusions of grandeur at that age is, like, I was, like, you know what, like, I can do anything, so at that point, we just decided that we wanted to, like, start our own band, like, even though we had, like, no, you know, skills in terms of, like, our instruments, and we just kind of went for it, and it was just, like, more, just, like, that feeling of being able to, I don't know, just, like, it's, like, if you set your mind to something, it's, like, you can do it, like, even if it's really scary, and, like, Mm -hmm. we were super terrified, like, early on, but, I mean, we found... I don't know, it's like you kind of like, I don't know, like end up getting like this like sense of empowerment like through just kind of going for things that like scare you a little bit too. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that was kind of the, like why we started it, yeah. So first it was the bands and then it was just exciting. Yeah, exactly. Really it was exciting. Like then we were just along for the ride. <laughs> and so when you started learning your instruments, was did you have an affinity for certain instruments that you were drawn to them or like did you already um, have pre-existing musical uh, talents that you, you, you know, and went from yeah. there. It's funny. Cause it's like, we all just like knew we wanted to be in a band. And I just like, remember at one point it was like, I don't know, like Nadia and I, like, obviously like we've lived together for a really long time. And like, I just really wanted to sing and really wanted to play guitar. I'd been hmm. doing vocals since I was like a little girl. And I remember like, I took like classical training, but, ah. um, uh, my voice dropped like when I hit like basically like the age of like 12 or 13. So I couldn't mm. do any of the classical stuff anymore. And I was like really bad, like at the Royal Contemporary type stuff. And like, it was just like super embarrassing. So I was like, I need to find a place like where I could like use like this deep voice that I have. And so it just like, I don't know, with indie rock, it just kind of seemed like you could do anything. And like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like there would kind of be like an audience for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I just remember saying like, Nadia, like, you know, you should play drums. Like, I mean, first of all, I never had like the balls to ever play drums. <laughs> <'cause it's> like, <laughs> that's like, that's like a tough instrument. And then, 
um, like originally when we first started the band, there was like four girls, and uh, the other girl, like she left the band like before the band even got signed. So French was actually like forced to like learn bass in like 24 hours. Wow. And she had always had like a like a I guess like a love for bass like at that point, mm-hmm. and it just kind of like happened in a way. Like it wasn't really anything planned. Like we just like really knew at that point that we really wanted to be in a band because we thought it was cool. <laughs> well, that's that's great and interesting. I think I can bring that to the workshops. I think that awesome. uh, I had some girls just trying to get them to speak into the microphone was so intimidating. And I told uh, them, it's just one step, right? Like every step exactly. that you make that's scary, you just have to think about it in that way. So yeah, you guys no, have come sure. a long way. Thank you. Yeah, that means a lot. But yeah, like, I mean, uh, just something that I thought about, it was uh, during the summer, we actually went to play uh, for the girls at Girls Rock Camp in Toronto. Oh, yeah, and that's like an amazing. I've talked about like that on my show. That's oh great. God, they're amazing! Yeah, and so that's what they kind of teach these girls. It's like you know, you go there and they teach the girls how to write songs, but it's like they they do it because it's like work workshops that helps them build confidence and exactly. just kind of you know, and it's amazing. Like we had such a great time there for sure. Wow, that's so amazing. Hmm. So now you put out uh, initially you put out Constant Lover, right? Was the first yeah. one. Yeah. Then a full length, and another EP after that. Uh, no, we did Constant Lover first, then we put out our first full length, that was Dancing with Daggers, that was 2006, mm. then we put out another full length, that was 2009, and then we took a long, long break, and then now we put out our EP, Witch Rock. And you did a lot of, you did a lot of touring, uh, initially, uh, did you yeah. go all over the world, or did you stick to North America, like, how many places have you guys traveled together? Oh my God, tons! Um, no, we we've, we've been really fortunate to see a lot of really great countries too. Like we got the opportunity to go to Japan twice, which was wow. probably like one of the greatest milestones that we've had like as a band, which was just amazing. And um, we've also been to like Spain, that was really great. Mm. Uh, we went to the UK for a festival. Uh, we've done like the US and like Canada. Um, I really want to go to, like, South America at one point. I think mm. that'd be really fun. Or just, like, Mexico in general, just because, like, that's, like, mine and Nadia's, like, cultural background. Oh, and the yeah. fact that we haven't been there is, like, kind of embarrassing. Ah, well, <laughs> you'll make you'll make it happen. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, no, we've been really fortunate that we've gotten to travel a lot because of this band. Because, you know, we have a lot of fun, like, exploring new places for sure. Did you ever have a moment when you were on tour and you were opening for a band and you got kind of the fangirl m- moment where you were nervous? that you're opening for them <laughs> oh man well for me there was like one moment i actually remember it was i don't even remember how long ago this was but um we were in vancouver and we were opening up for sloan Woo. and sloan invited me on stage to play uh coke scene which is like uh-huh. my favorite sloan song wow and it was to sing with them and it was just that was like such a good moment like I remember just like being up there with Tambri and I totally felt like such a fan girl at that, point. <laughs> that, was, that was really fun yeah oh that's amazing so uh now you've I know you've changed labels a couple of times right mm-hmm. and now how, this latest endeavor is it out on your own label yeah we we started our own record label uh it's called Splendor House Records and it's distributed uh the CP was distributed by E1 Entertainment Music and they've been like really supportive of the project like we have a lot of like really great people working with us right now and yeah it's just it's kind of been like super liberating you know it's like getting to that point where it's like you get to call your own shots and it's like you don't really have to answer to anybody so Mm -hmm. I kind of like it it's like we're just kind of doing everything at our own pace and it takes the pressure off and it's just it makes it fun again you know Mm mm-hmm interesting well why don't we play another another one of your new songs and then we'll come back in the studio and we'll talk some more okay sounds good what do you think so i I was gonna play uh lucky next do it (laughs) okay okay let's do it you are listening to the betty howell show here on cilu radio 102.7 fm here is magneta lane with lucky
And you are listening to The Betty Howell Show here on CILU Radio, 102.7 FM. We just heard from Magneta Lane, and we played the song Lucky off of their new EP, Witch Rock. And uh, if you're just tuning in, we've had in the studio via telephone Lexi, who is the lead singer and also plays guitar in the band Magneta Lane. So you guys are going to be playing a show tomorrow night here in Thunder Bay. Yes, and at Crocs. At Crocs. Um, and you have an opener, which is Android 16. Is that someone that's touring with you? No, no, that's a, a local Thunder Bay band. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're like, um, playing with, like, locals on this tour for sure. We're, like, trekking out on our own for this tour. So, oh. yeah, it's been fun. And so this EP, after you're done this tour, I remember reading somewhere you're going to go back, write some more songs, and you're going to be producing a new full length? Well, actually, that was the original plan, but, I mean, we, we're kind of going to be taking a break when we okay. uh, go back, so it's like we're just going to kind of, like, you know, go and try some other things out this year, but um, you never know, like, if it might be in the cards at some point, it's just, like, we want to kind of get to a place where, um, you know, it's like we're, we're kind of, like, ready to write another record, mm-hmm. um, and again, that's kind of, like, the beauty of having <laughs> your own label, like, yeah. you kind of get to decide when you get to put out your own record. Rather than somebody being like, you have a year to put out the next record, you know, or... Under you know, pressure. Just like, exactly. But, I mean, this year, like, you know, French, she's going to be going back to school. Because, um, mm. yeah, she's really, really, really brainiac. <laughs> 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 um, but, um, but yeah, and then uh, for, uh, Nadia and I, we're going to be starting, like, a side project that we're going to hopefully get out there maybe by the summer, I guess, like, just depending. And that's also going to be, like, on our own label as well, so... Um, so yeah, we're just kind of like in this like experimental phase of like what we're going to be doing, but hmm. you know, but I think it's got to be that way, right? It's like, um, like you, you stay together as a band because you allow each other to do things that you have to do to kind of make yourself happy in your own individual lives as well, which I think is really important. So Well, and you grow and that'll affect your writing together, right? Yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, when you started out and you're young, did you, ha- did you know about the industry? Did you like when you went into it? I, I realized you wanted to make music and you wanted to perform, but mm-hmm. when you first were signed, did you have any idea of, like, the business side of the music, or was it kind of a, a shock to learn about that stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, no. We had no idea. It was, like, it was one of those things where we were just, like, really young girls, and, you know, it's like, you know, we, we signed a contract and just kind of went along for the ride, and then, you know, there, we had a lot of ups and downs and stuff like that, but it's, like, through that whole process, it was it's kind of been, like, a blessing because it's, like, you know, that's the only way you can really learn the industry or, yes. like, become interested in, like, the business side of it is by kind of, like, learning through, like, making mistakes. And I think it's just, like, really important that, it's like, if you're a new band, it's, like, you just ask all the questions possible to, like, be informed about your business because it is really, really important. And it took us, like, a really long time to get to that place, but it's, like, now I can honestly say it's, like, we're so much more intelligent because of it, so... Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely been an interesting ride. <laughs> Do you think it led you, like having that steep learning curve, did it lead you to want to have your own label so you could have that control? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. It was just like once you kind of learn like what it takes and like, you know, it's like we've just gotten to a point where we're like, okay, we know who we want to work with. We know who we want to hire to do certain things like mm-hmm. for us as a band. It's like we all we have to do is take out the middle person. And that's like basically exactly what we did, you know. Mm, that's fantastic. And interesting that in this kind of age uh, where do-it-yourself is even more so, uh, mm-hmm. it's interesting that you're able to really make that work for you. I think Thank some, you. <laughs> some, sometimes like it seems like music is lost because there's so much music available now, but yeah. I think yeah. your, your history is probably going to give you a bit of a, an interesting edge. You know, you'll know... Thanks how yeah, you want to express sure. yourself hmm, yeah you, you learn a lot from falling a lot on your butt <laughs> well that's what they say right fail yeah. and then you get up Trial and, and error. yeah and keep going failure yeah. is a good thing well not that you failed but you know yeah. the saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not at all uh i think the last time you were in town i i went to the show but i missed you like i came mm-hmm. in and it was during the last last song but it was so amazing to see an all-girl band in thunder bay um thank you and uh, like my show is about that, um, but a lot of women don't also want to talk about, you know, feminism or mm-hmm. that kind of stuff uh, in an interview. And yeah, uh, it's really refreshing to meet a band that have uh, opinions about that stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you. Yeah, like, that's actually, like, an interesting thing because it's, like, we get asked all the time, like, flat out, like, you know, do you guys consider yourself a feminist band? Mm -hmm. And there's been so many times where we've been, like, no, we just don't, like, we just don't call ourselves a feminist mm -hmm. band. I think, like, as individuals, like, in our lives, we're, like, definitely, feminist. like, feminist, you yeah. know? But the thing is, it's, like, I mean, I look at bands like Bikini Kill and stuff, it's, like, to me, those are, like, the true, like, artists, like, feminist bands, and, like, almost feels like we're not worthy of that title, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, I don't know so. about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, like, I mean, but... Yeah, like, I mean, but, yeah, definitely as, like, individuals, like, in our own lives, like, that's something, like, we we definitely try to, I don't know, be, like, really strong, independent women, you mm -hmm. know, and I think that that's really important, like, for, for women to just, like, find their own voice and just, like, be independent, you know, and mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know, it's, it's a good thing, it's, it makes you feel good about yourself. Exactly, well, and then you make your own decisions and you feel good in them, like, what yeah, you're exactly. doing, you know, exactly, um, so it's going to be interesting. You're back in Thunder Bay, and uh, I hope that lots of people come out to your show and you have a great experience here. I hope so, too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, when you tour again, make sure that you come, if you can, come into the station. We can do a live interview, if not a telephone interview. It's Sounds been, great. It's been really great talking to you. All right. Thanks so much for having me. I'm going to play um, uh, one of your first songs off of The Constant Lover, The Constant Lover, I'm going to play. Um, throwback. <laughs> yeah, throwback to the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, awesome. And I, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for being on the Betty Howell Show. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>
Don't you believe? 